We're going to look at the internal anatomy of the skull. Let's begin anteriorly with the uh, parts of the ethmoid bone. This is the Christogaly. Christogaly means rooster's crest, and it does kind of look like the crown on a head of a rooster. That divides this flattened area of bone into a right and left side, which is called the cribriform plate. And the cribriform plate has small holes going through it that allow nerves from the olfactory bulbs to pass up and go into the brain and give us our sense of smell. We're now in the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone has this rather Batman looking uh, wing here. This is called the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. And we called it the lesser wing because there are these areas here that look like giant wings and we call those the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. Posterior to that is this little scooped out area which is the cella turstica. The cella turstica means Turk's saddle. The cella is where the pituitary gland lives, so it's well protected on both sides. Now there are several holes that we need to know. Let's start out by understanding that in the sphenoid bone, there are uh, six holes that we need to know. In the temporal bone, we're going to find three holes. And in the occipital bone, there are going to be two holes that we need to know. Let's begin at the front with these. They're running on a diagonal to the back of the orbit, or eye. This is the optic foramen, and the optic foramen carries the optic nerve from the eyeball crossing over up to the brain. That gives us our sense of vision. There are these slots inferior to that, and those are the superior orbital fissures. The superior orbital fissure carries nerves to the eye. However, these go to muscles around the eye for eye movement, so these are mainly motor nerves. And then in a row, there are the, these three little holes here, and then another one on the medial to those. One, two, three, four. We're going to say the round oval spine by the lake. Round oval spine by the lake. So this would stand for foramen rotundum. Foramen rotundum is for the maxillary branch of the vagus nerve. Then this oval hole is aptly named the foramen ovale. Foramen ovale is for the mandibular branch of the vagus nerve. And then finally down below we have the small hole, which is the foramen spinosum, which has the medial meningeal artery going through it. This large, more ragged looking hole uh, medially to those is the foramen lacerum. And foramen lacerum, just think if it's kind of ragged, if you stuck your finger in there, it would get lacerated. In the adult is filled with cartilage, so this is really an artifact or a remnant of growth and um, not of much importance otherwise. This is the petrous process of the temporal bone and there would be a hole that's not well demonstrated here but this would be the carotid canal. The carotid canal is for the internal carotid artery and we know carotids and jugulars go together so below that is the jugular foramen and the jugular foramen is for the internal jugular vein, the glossopharyngeal vagus and accessory nerves. And then I'm going to do this on the other side. Through the petrous process there's another hole called the internal acoustic meatus. And the internal acoustic meatus was for the facial and vestibulocochlear nerves. Now even though there's an external acoustic meatus, this does not go through all the way. There's a partition of bone between those two holes. And then finally at the base, at the occipital bone, we've got our large foramen magnum. And then running through the base of the occipital condyles is the hypoglossal canal. And the hypoglossal canal houses the hypoglossal nerve.